Anansi meets Father Thunder. Hello, this is Richard, and I'm back to tell you how Anansi met Father Thunder. As you may know by now, Anansi comes from Ghana in West Africa, and sometimes he is a tricky spider, and sometimes he is a human. There was a famine in the land. Anansi did not know where his next meal would come from. He was walking along the beach with his hand on his empty stomach when his hungry eyes caught sight of an island out at sea. It was lined with palm trees. Oh yes, he thought. Coconuts! But how was he to reach the island? He soon found an answer of sorts to his problem. Further along the beach, he came across an old broken boat. It did not look seaworthy, but times were desperate. He shoved it out into the sea, and a great wave buffeted him back onto the sand. Hunger prompted him back onto his feet to try again. And bam! A great wave knocked him over. Seven times he tried to push the boat out to sea, seven times he fought with the waves, and only on the seventh occasion did he succeed in getting the boat afloat. Anansi paddled hard in the direction of the island. He could see the hairy coconuts clearly now. He licked his lips. He could almost taste the coconut milk. He jumped eagerly onto the land and tied his boat to a root before climbing swiftly up the tree. He soon reached the coconuts and started to cut them loose and drop them down, meaning for them to land in the boat. But oh no! However carefully he aimed, every time he dropped a nut, it landed, plop, in the sea and sunk straight down. Anansi's heart was breaking at the sight of good food heading for the bottom. At last, in despair, he himself jumped off the branch and straight into the water. Better to drown, he thought, than die of hunger. Down he went, straight down to the sea bed. And oddly enough, he found he could see and breathe without any trouble. Here in the water, he saw a little cottage made of seashells. He knocked on the door, and it was answered by an old man with a long grey beard. Who are you? asked Anansi. I am Thunder, boomed the old man. Was it you who dropped coconuts on my roof? I, I, I'm sorry, sir, said Anansi. I cut the coconuts because I'm hungry and I meant for them to land my boat, but they missed and, and went into the sea. It is well that I am in a good mood, replied Thunder, or I might brew up a sea storm. Come in, I have something to give to you. Anansi stepped into the cottage, hoping for a meal of fish. But Father Thunder had an even more wonderful gift. Take this pot to your house, he said. Any time you are hungry, it will feed you. Anansi gladly accepted the gift, and a moment later he found himself sitting back in his boat. He paddled swiftly to the shore and then ran to his village. When he arrived back at his hut, he took the pot straight into his room and said, Pot, do as Father Thunder commanded you. And the pot shook, hissed, and steamed, glowed red with heat, and was soon full of food. For a hungry man, it was the happiest sight in the world. He greedily gobbled down all the food and was about to call his family to demonstrate what the pot could do when he paused for thought. What if... My family overwork the pot, 
it might break. And nobody in the village has the power to mend such a magical thing. A pot that can't cook is no good to anyone. No. This toy is strictly for grown-ups. I shall keep it to myself and out of the greedy grabbing hands of my children and relatives. And with this selfish idea in his head, Nancy hid the wonderful cooking pot. As the days of the famine went by, his wife and children grew thinner and thinner, while he grew fatter and fatter. But sneakiness ran in his family, and his eldest son, Kwekudzin, decided to spy on his father and see why his belly was enjoying such a contrasting fortune to the rest of the family. He had the power of shape-shifting, which he used to turn himself into a fly and fasten himself to the corner of Anansi's room. At dinner time, he saw his father creep into the room, take out the pot, command it to cook, and then gobble up the magical food. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz